phase two of truck testing. Cindy's driving, how's it feel? Feels pretty good, I think my bun's getting in the way. Yeah, we'll get some Cindy, some currency training and towing. Right. How's it feel? Um, I forgot how this headrest attacks me, so we're gonna have yes, to... Yes, we've had, we've had headrest issues before. Yeah. Okay, I think that's pretty good, let me take my hat off. How's the bun in the headrest? Well, I don't have a bun, so it's null. The one thing I've always had, I've had an issue with is for whatever reason, this headrest seems to come up against me when I have my hair down in a bun. So that can be a little irritating if you're driving and it's constantly rubbing on the back of your head. Okay, welcome to this week's episode of Love Summit. And where are we at? We are at Ocean Lakes Family Campground in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And a lot of our videos, we talk about RVing, how-to videos, mm -hmm. our travel videos. But there's one member of the team that doesn't get a lot of credit all the right. time. Right, that's our tow vehicle. The love truck. Absolutely. And so in this episode, we just ticked over 75,000 miles of total mileage. And we just took it out west and did some high elevation travel. And so we're going to go ahead and go through a complete review. We're going to show you what we like about the truck, mm -hmm. what we wish we had gotten on the truck, mm -hmm. what we don't like about the truck, right. things that have broken on it, yep. and also some other data that might be useful, such as average miles per gallon towing, um, and just all things, basically, truck. Love truck. Let's talk about some of the key mechanical features and why we chose them on our 2018 Ford F-150 XLT. First of all, it's a four x four. You know, we live in Vermont and this thing also has to do some driving in the snow, but more likely you don't need four x four until you need it when you're towing a trailer. The important thing to remember is we are towing a trailer that weighs 4,680 pounds. So our V8 five liter Coyote pulls that thing no problem. Uphills from a stop, absolutely no issue with the Coyote V8. We'll talk about any issues we've had with it, but from an engine, it just pulls great. We have done mountain passes out west over 9,000 feet up and over, and the five liter just does great. It doesn't have any issues whatsoever with a trailer of our size. The other thing made it to that is the 3.31 rear axle. We got the 3.31 versus the 3.53 or 3.73 simply because we don't need that big heavy gear ratio. The, um, we only lost 125 pounds in tow capacity going to the 3.31 versus the 3.53. So no issue there, slightly better gas mileage. The thing that I love about the, this truck too is the 10 speed transmission. You know, our old truck was a 2001. We went from a 01, we used it for 17 plus years. And when we went to this one, that 10 speed transmission with the oil cooler is absolutely wonderful. We have a three mile, 8% grade to get to our house. And I literally touched the brakes once and that's because of a hairpin curve. Otherwise the transmission uh, programming just takes over keeps the truck at the right speed. It is simply wonderful. So from a structural perspective, we chose the uh, super cab model versus the crew cab that's far more popular. Look around, all the pickup trucks are the crew cab. And we did that for three reasons, basically. First of which, these things are cheaper because everybody wants the crew cab. Nobody wants the super cab. So this one was a substantially cheaper than a similarly priced crew cab. Second, we get the longer bed. And which gives us more storage in the back. Which is what I like. And then finally, of course, for us, we can count on one hand the number of times we've had people in our back seat. So for us, our back seat is more of a storage unit. Yep. And I'd rather have the storage in the trunk bed versus here. And finally, the last key mechanical feature of this truck is we ordered it with the um, 7,000 GVWR uh, gross vehicular weight rating, which gives me a payload of 2,000. 97 pounds, which is means I don't have to worry about it. Most of my payload when I've weighed it before comes in around 1600 pounds when it's completely stuffed for a trip. Mm -hmm. So the truck has 79,242.7 miles on it. And of that 55,982 have been pulling the camper. And how do you know this? Because I track everything in the log book. Let's see the log book. That means about 70.6% of the total mileage of this truck has been pulling the camper. 
So one other thing that I do love about this data center here is the transmission temperature gauge that I didn't have on the other one. And we're at idle right now after having just done a trip. But what I love about it is I watch this quite frequently. It's about 196 uh, degrees when you're just running out on the highway on a hot day with no trailer and about 204 degrees on a hot day when you're running with the trailer. So it's only about an eight degree difference in transmission temperature with the trailer being pulled. So I think that's pretty excellent. I think the highest we ever got was going up a big mountain. I think we hit about 215 on the transmission temperature going up that big mountain out from New Mexico, which was like 9,000 feet, but still it never moves away from the center point of the gauge. So the transmission temperature monitoring is a big feature that I like about this truck. So one of the questions we get all the time are what is the fuel mileage of your tow vehicle? And over the last 50,000 plus miles that we've towed the Airstream, we have averaged 12 point, well, 12.025 miles per gallon. So roughly 12 miles per gallon is what we get towing our uh, Airstream 22 foot trailer weighing 4,680 pounds. So it averages, sometimes it'll go as low as on a yearly average, 11.3, as high as 12.3, but we get about 12 miles per gallon when towing. And the other thing I love about the F-150 is the capless uh, get fuel tank. So when I pull the nozzle out, close it, and it goes easy peasy. Let's talk about three of my favorite upgrades we did as well as one kind of downgrade that we did that people will probably disagree with. But the first and most important upgrade we did right from the dealership is this truck did not come with the super heavy duty style tow mirrors. We had them put on the super heavy duty mirrors. Now it was $850 in for labor and the mirrors themselves. And I got the manual. So you kind of have to pull them out and do this number. Now, why you, did you get the manual? Because it was like another thousand dollars to get the powered one. So the other thing is that our old truck, the 2001 F-150 had the slip on SIPA mirrors and they're adequate, they work, but these things are 100% better. I literally 100% better than those slip on mirrors. From and, a visual standpoint, it's a better mirror quality. Yeah, it, it, you can just see a lot more and heck, our. RV is only eight feet wide. We've got a narrow one. We don't have the eight and a half foot wide and these things can see around it. They are absolutely wonderful. I, I, I will never ever have another tow vehicle without the super heavy duty mirrors. So let's talk about the bed of the truck and what we did with it. You know, our 01, again, we had a tonneau cover when we first bought it and we junked that thing in about a year, I think. We yeah, threw, we hated it. We hated it and threw it out in the garbage. And the reason for that, as you can see, is the vertical storage. You know, Airstreams specifically are notorious for having crappy storage. Um, in the, like, you know, if you got a fifth wheel or a big motorhome or something, you get a lot of that basement storage. Yep, Airstreams have, have none of that. We don't have good outdoor storage at all. So that tonneau limited things completely and it, it was completely unusable. So we went ahead and got a cap for the old one. We got the same ARE cap for this one. And there are a, two critical features which I will always recommend for caps. The first and most important are what they call the wind doors, lockable wind doors, so that you can just lift it up like that. And here's a great demonstration of the vertical space that you get. All of this wouldn't have been possible with the tonneau cover. So I love the wind doors. You can get these uh, uh, metal or opaque so that people can't see in, but we've never had an issue. The other thing I'll always recommend is the single latch here. You know, a lot of these doors come with these two things. And again, this is simpler. One less thing to fail. So and you have one less thing to lock too. Yes. And we are loaded for a three month trip. Yep. That is only, a, that is less than 1600 pounds of payload right there. So another thing I really liked about this truck is the column shifter. Most of the F-150s come with this little shifter here so that you, know, you can kind of think, yeah, I'm in my Porsche 911 and sport I'm shifting mode. like this. I'm going to sport mode. 
whereby the practicality of it is I now have this whole compartment here where I can put stuff. I usually put my sunglasses in there. This stock shifter is definitely something that I would do again, a hundred percent. So I mentioned that there was going to be one thing that was kind of like, not really something that I love, but something that I'm gl just glad I deleted and didn't get. And you'll see that we have none of the Ford uh, trailer back assist. We have the integrated brake controller, of course, the four wheel drive, automatic shift, but there was no way I was learning how to back up a trailer. And it just, there was just something about that that said, no, I don't want to, I've been doing it for 20 years. I was not going to learn to do it like this. Yep. Grab at the bottom, turn it the way you want the direction of the trailer to go. It's that simple. You know, I do all of my own oil changes with the exception of one time when I had Ford do it, when I brought it in, which we'll talk about the things that went wrong with the truck. But I do all of my own oil changes. And you can see here, scrolling through the screen, the uh, mileage when I did the oil changes uh, on the truck. But two things, A, you, trucks are getting bigger now. So on our checklist, and you can see our checklist at www.love7.com forward slash checklist here, but one of our pre-departure checklists is to check our oil. And with this truck, I cannot get the dipstick without my little stool here. So You used to be able to check your oil without that. With the that. 01, I used to be able to do it without it. Yeah. And the other irritating thing for me is that the oil amount for the oil change is 8.9 quarts. They, they, they couldn't have made it 9. 8.9 is very... Yeah, it's like 8.8. It's like so you're, that last little bit you're trying to figure out, it's not nine, it's like 8.8. .8. And you're like, really? So you always end up with a little oil in the, in the thing. And it's just a little minor irritant. Yep. But um, yeah, that's one thing. So another little design issue that, you know, I think Ford should have paid a little bit more attention to was that the parking brake, the pull on and the pull off is this little thing. My old one had a nice little handle that would click like this. The problem here being occasionally you'll do this and you're thinking you're pulling the parking brake off and what you're doing is adjusting the pedals back and forward because the two are very tactically similar. Mm -hmm. They feel a lot the same and they're pretty close together. So I have on occasion... Um, Grabbed the wrong one. Pushed, trying to take the brake off and I've actually adjusted my pedals. <laughs> So another thing that I dislike about this, and this is my dumb fault. Well, it's it's one thing you dislike about it. Yeah, I but I was dumb. Mm. Because when I bought the cap, they said, hey, we have a great service here. We're offering a free felt lining. Mm -hmm. And my old cap didn't have a felt lining, and it was finished nicely on the inside. And so I was like, I don't want that. And the guy's like, no, dude, you don't understand. It's free. I'm like, I don't care if it's free. I don't want it. Because I, I was afraid it would get dirty, it would rip, it'd get mildewy, it'd get oils, whatever. Right. It would just look like crap. And, but yeah. So the old ones, they finish nicely, but they determined that it was probably cheaper to put the felt in to finish this. Yep. So the finish here is really crappy. Um, and there's still, I'm it's still. fiberglass. Yeah, you can still pick. You can smooth this down, you can sand it down, you can varnish. I've had people comment on that. That's a lot of work. I though. just haven't gotten around to it. So uh, that's a, that was a dumb thing on my part. Yep. So as far as what has gone wrong over the course of the mileage of this truck, there's one recurring issue, and then there's uh, two issues that kind of happen. The recurring issue is I'm hearing, I'm doing some research, and when the truck gets super hot on a super hot day of towing. And we stop. And we stop to go to the bathroom or to get gas. And then you go to start the truck again. It kind of goes. And I'm hearing that's vapor lock due to some heating of the fuel system. And it always starts, but it's just this little irritating. It struggles. And it struggles, but it starts. And so I got to figure that one out. Comment below if your Ford F-150 has that problem. And if you fixed it. And if you fixed it. And maybe it's common to the V8s and not the EcoBoost, but certainly uh, comment below on that. All right, what else has gone wrong with the truck? At 41,344 miles, I got a check engine light and it turned out to be the failure of the transmission auxiliary pump. And I, I told you previously that I have the oil pump cooler, oil cooler and something failed there. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. That was all covered under warranty. No problem. No issues. They just took it in. And that's, however, when I did have this one, I'm like, this is a lesson to everyone. Okay. I'm like, nah, I'm due for an oil change. Can you go ahead and change the oil? Oops. And they said, yep, no problem. We'll go ahead and change the oil. And I said, hey, but I've been putting Mobile One Synthetic into it. Can you put Mobile One Synthetic? And the guy's like, well, that's more expensive. I'm like, yeah, I know that. Figuring it's like five bucks for regular stuff and eight bucks for sure. other stuff. Yeah. That nine quarts of mobile, they charged me $20.32 a quart for $182.88 worth of oil. And that didn't even count the oil change service. Right, the labor was 42, so I paid 261 bucks. For something that- For something that, yeah. Doesn't cost you that much when you do it yourself. The moral of the story, when somebody says that's gonna be more expensive, say, how much more expensive? Absolutely. Instead of, oh yeah, I know it's gonna be more expensive. So the other thing that finally went wrong was most recently we had a check engine light come on and it was a cylinder number one misfire and so they did the diagnostics they did the whole nine yards and they ended up replacing cylinder number one's coil so and um, we've had that happen on our old truck too the old truck the only thing that ever went wrong on the thing was three coils over the course of 17 years failed so somehow ford doesn't hasn't dialed in their uh cylinder coils yet yep um, I also had them change the spark plugs at the same time as, um, for that, at that mileage. So it's like a diesel festival here tonight. Jeez, um. But yeah, that, so that service cost me $595 to have the new coil put on, which was actually only a 128 bucks, but the labor was 239 and, and then, then the spark plugs. The, the spark plugs were 56 bucks and the labor on that was 150. So I probably could have done the spark plugs and should have, but sometimes you just get lazy. Yep. And it happens. So that's what went wrong over the course of this truck. So there's very few things we would have gotten if we had to do it all over again. I already mentioned the felt on the inside of the cap. One thing I might have gotten would have been that step that comes into this thing so that when you bring this down, you can open it up and then step up into the, the truck itself. Yep. Um, that's something I bet we can add. At some point. At some point if we wanted to. But yeah, that's one thing. The other thing I would have added probably would have been the 36 gallon fuel tank. This truck came with the standard 23 gallon fuel tank. And we debated when we bought it, should we have it put in? We're like, you know what, that's still gonna give us 220 or so miles per tow. We're probably gonna stop that much anyway just for you know stretch, relax, bat we're not gonna go like 400 right. plus miles without stopping. So we're like, yeah, is it that necessary to put 36 into this? Yep. Well. It's a nice to have, it's not a must have. Right. So that's just the things that we would have done differently had we bought it. One thing we do love is this blue jeans paint. Yeah, that's sweet, isn't it? I love the blue jeans. Yeah, when we did our video on buying the truck, most of the comments were like, dude, you focused all on the color and not the mechanicals. Well, well, such we, is we, life. We did focus on the mechanicals. Maybe some of that didn't make it to the video. It didn't make it to the video. That was the thing, so. All right, well, there you have it. A review of our faithful tow vehicle, the love truck, our F-150. What do you think? I think overall, the assessment that I get is that we have way more things that we like about it and very few things that we dislike about it. Yeah, there's very, very few things we dislike about it. This, you know, when we sold our tan truck. We were very sad. We were sad. I loved it. And if it hadn't been there, it was rusting out from Vermont winters, we mm -hmm. would have kept it. But once we got this one, the upgrade in technology, yep. the engine, the transmission, all of that stuff just became such a complete package. And it made our trips much more comfortable and enjoyable. So if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. And if you think we've earned a subscription, click to subscribe. And comment below if you have any questions about our truck or have any comments about what we've talked about. Because we come out with RV and Airstream related videos just like this one every Tuesday. Thanks for watching.